Days of our lives upped the body count as it has us worried and new for a fan faith. Plus, have they asterisk finally asterisk tracked down Abigail. Last week I mentioned how Days of Our Lives was kind of a roller coaster, exciting episodes followed by snooze-worthy ones. This week I hate to say it, but it felt more like a flume ride. You go up a little bit, but really it's mostly downhill. But there were some bright spots, so let's get to it. Body count. I realized I wasn't alone and struggling this week when Leo dropped that tidbit to chat about Xander getting the acting bug for body and soul. My thought was, a few episodes were kind of rough lately. Did I fall asleep somewhere this week and miss that happening? Then I saw a message board topic that asked the same thing. So nope, it was just a random Leo fact dropped out of nowhere. And on that matter, I've avoided talking about body and soul, but it's time. Enjoyed it back when it was first introduced because it was a fun, inconsequential, soap caricature from what I thought was the 80s, but was shockingly current, that Abby was watching Ma Prisoner. But if they're going to bring it into the show proper, it needs to be better than this. I'm so sorry I'd ever said anything about making it a spin-off. Maybe if it was done as a standalone thing like soap, back in the day, it could be fun. But incorporating it in like this, it's like they're throwing every behind-the-scenes, eye-rolling, lazy caricature of soaps at it. They're hiring Hattie who can't act worth a damn, but looks the way they want her to. And what was that line of Abby's about how Hattie's motivation is that her character is upset because she's not the town's top diva anymore? What does that mean? That's not how soap operas work. They'd have actual plots and Marlena's utter obliviousness was bizarre. Body and soul. What's that? Even people who don't watch soaps aren't clueless to them existing. Trust me, as a millennial who's written about them for over a decade and a half, I have never run into anyone who, after telling them what I do for a living, doesn't recognize a single soap opera show name. And I'm talking about younger folks. The generations above me are even more familiar. Then there's hiring Johnny. That's fine, we saw that coming and he needs a job, but calling him an experienced director. How much experience does he have? Oh, you mean that Marlena Possession movie that never got made. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to rant, but I'm suddenly afraid we're going to be locked into this for months since it's all shot already and each time it's on. I need an aspirin. Hopefully, at least, the actors have fun with it. That could be a bright spot if they just let go and enjoy the absurdity. So long, farewell. As for something a bit meatier that Abby got to do this week, how did we feel about Nicole and Eric's exit? It felt kind of rushed to me, which is weird, because we and the folks at Days all knew it was coming. The flashbacks were cute, but there still could have been more, seeing as how we likely are saying goodbye to these two together forever. Though that doesn't necessarily mean Greg Vaughan's Eric. We know he'll be back, though I doubt it'll be long-term for now. Marlena's speech was beautiful, and I've got a feeling there were real emotions on set. But the farewell party still seemed like it could have been grander. Sigh. With everything going on behind the scenes, there's just no part of me that feels good about any of this. Holly, though, is now officially Maggie's problem. I'm kind of curious to see how she handles things. Lord knows Brady isn't going to be father of the year in the coming weeks. Murder one. And two. This week certainly wasn't all a drag. Everett and Bobby's deaths were a genuine surprise which in this day and age is impressive. Maybe I wasn't expecting it because if they died we'd never know what the point of them ever was. I was hoping the returning writers would wrap up the D.I.D. story before sending Beverett off but I guess they just decided to can it without any explanation. That happens with writing changes, whether intentional or due to strikes. I'm still not even sure why Everett was brought in in the first place. I don't think the split personalities was the original plan, so what was it? Was he always meant to die? Was he just to break up Siphony and Chad to make room for Abigail's return? because I don't think Abigail was even planned to come back when Blake Barris was hired. I guess we'll never know. 
but I will say Abigail Klein and Aaliyah Cantu were great as Tiffany and Jada handled their respective exes' deaths in their own ways. Jada held it together and went into work mode to get to the bottom of things, even while letting her own heartbreak break through now and then. And Tiffany broke down after saying goodbye to Everett, who surfaced just in time to be the victim of Bobby's machinations, 